All right, everyone. Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully a short video, because my videos tend to run longer than I expect, but a quick video to discuss the Ferrer uh, Lander Midnight. Um, as I, I think of a quick review, this is my second Ferrer. Uh, I will link below the uh, my other video on the Ferrer GMT, and this is going to be a quickie, I think, on the Ferrer GMT Midnight. Um, and I was actually I was pronouncing it as Farah because I thought the R was silent, but uh, I was uh, corrected that it is Ferrer. I think Farah actually sounds better, but I I'm not making up the rule, so uh, Ferrer it is. So the uh, Ferrer Midnight um, Lander Midnight is a addition to the the Lander series. The original Lander series is a GMT uh, with a sort of a, a green, seafoam green um, dial. It's very pretty. Uh, it, it's sort of, I think in some ways, I think you could almost say sort of the iconic Ferrer watch in, in that I think that's what a lot of people knew, maybe were first purchasing or, or mostly interested in the, in the brand by seeing that. And I have to say, you know, uh, as I said in the other video on this company, that I really like what Ferrer is doing with their colorways. Um, you know, it's really a high risk for a company, a new company, to come out with bold colors and bold designs, some of which are, are re, sort of a retake on a classic design. Sometimes they're just a new design. But, you know, most companies, especially newer companies, are usually going to try to come out with a design that is the, the most appealing to the most people. And so generally they tend to be, in, in, at least to my view, uh, boring. I mean, I, I just find a lot of the a lot of the stuff that's coming out uh, is kind of boring. Not it's not un bad looking. It's usually very well made, uh, but I I just have find it that to me it just sort of looks like a very minor play on everything else. And so I think Ferrer really give them credit for coming out, you know, of the box by with with really with bold colors colorways that obviously will appeal strongly to some people. Well, not to other people. Uh, certainly, we know that it, it has appealed to many people because most things are out of stock almost almost immediately, if not really quickly. And even the last time I went and looked uh, at the, the Ferrer Midnight, uh, they were out of stock on those two. So the Ferrer Midnight, uh, again, what I like about it is not just uh, it's not just like they said, well, let's let's just put a dark blue you know, version of, of what we already have and call it a day to see how many we can sell. The Ferrer Midnight is, di is a different watch almost altogether in terms of the, the accents they put on it. Um, a lot of classic Aguirre Ferrer visuals. Um, let's see if I can get any, any sort of, uh, see if we can get anything. Now, as you can see, this is a really striking watch. Um, it's, it's, it, it's uh, 39.5 millimeters, uh, so obviously it's a smidge under 40. I don't know why they didn't just go 40. Um, also, a lot of things I'm going to say about this, supposedly this quick video, uh, for more details and, on Ferrer in general, my thoughts, uh, go to my other video, which I will post below. Also, as far as details, specs, and all that, I will also post that below this video because I, I, I think talking about endless specs is just basically boring. Anybody can read about it. You know, obviously, uh, not obviously, but uh, the case is made of 316 steel. Uh, I think, again, most notable, again, is they are using a, a Salita uh, 330-2 movement, top grade, not even the base grade. They're using the top grade, and that is a really high-quality movement. Uh, I don't think it says on their... I, I don't think it says on their page that it's regulated, but I suspect strongly it is regulated because it's been very accurate uh, for me. Um, so I, I wish they should probably mention that. Um, the, it's an, I, they're all, you saw the photos. I mean, they're not, obviously I'm not going to win any production values here for, uh, you know, for what showing you the way I'm doing this. So don't hold that against me. I'm no, uh, I'm no Teddy Baldazar, but open case back is also ooh, hopefully not too shiny. It's very nicely done. Uh, it has a, a thick box crystal you can see that. Look at the edge there. Very nicely done. You know, like all the fairer. Um, watches the fit and the finish is just very high quality. You know when you take, you know you take your loop and I don't know if any some people not everybody has a loop. These are old school, so uh, changing top a little bit. So I've had this loop since 1983 or four, and what these were used for was looking at 
uh, film negatives. We used to, we would, you put the film negative right up to the loop and you could see if it was something you wanted to use, if it had problems uh, and all that before you started printing pictures. Now, some of you probably don't even, don't even recall using film cameras, but that's what these guys were for. And they're also great for really, really getting up close on watches and even better than, say, a magnifying glass and looking for at the little details. And Ferrer, uh, you know, when you get up close and you start looking at the, at the indices and the loom and the hands and all that, the quality control is just outstanding. Um, hopefully that will continue, but I, you know, I now have two of them and, you know, you look for dust and you look for, you know, smudges and you look for, you know, bad, poor lines around loom and things. Uh, it, this, this watch passes with flying colors, uh, for me. And, uh, I think Ferrer is definitely not one of the inexpensive micros. It is probably towards the upper, you know, in the upper, the direction of micros, uh, maybe mid price micro. I mean, there's more expensive micros, but they're not inexpensive. Uh, but the quality for value is very high. Uh, again, I would have no, if you put a different name, a well known name on this watch, and um, let's even get the color. It also it really looks nice when you move it around. Mm, can we see that? It looks black. Uh, depending on, then it looks midnight blue. There you go. I think you can get that. But if you were to put a different name, uh, a well known brand on this, and tell me it was sold for three, four times the money, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blink an eye. Uh, and I think everybody who's had a experience with their Ferrer uh, would agree with that. Now, uh, it also comes with a good quality strap. No, no complaints about the strap. Uh, what I actually did, though, was I changed the strap. This is actually a Hirsch uh, performance strap. If you don't know Hirsch performance straps, Hirsch, you definitely need to know about those. Uh, what I like about Hirsch performance straps, they come in different styles. This one is is leather, and on the back they have they. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. So on the back is sort of a rubber synthetic material with these channels, so it the sweat and the heat and whatever you don't ruin a leather strap. I'm in Florida. I also tend to sweat more maybe than more people do, but I I don't really like leather straps. Wearing leather straps for a daily wear, I'm, I'll put on a, a a leather strap watch to go out for a you know for the night or whatever. But as far as a daily wear, and I've been wearing this daily for a while now. Uh, it's got to be something uh, like a Hirsch performance strap. I, I don't like NATO straps. I don't like rubber straps. I think they look ugly and ir ir or I just sweat under them. And Hirsch performance straps, now they don't, some of them aren't leather. Some of them are, are, are all different materials, but I'm a big fan. And I think on, the, on this watch, this leather top brown uh, looks really good. Uh, it comes with a, a more of a matching blue leather strap, which I think, which I think looks great too. But for myself... Uh, if it's going to be a daily wear, uh, most watches for me, like I said, I will, uh, I will put on something like a Hirsch performance strap. So I think that's, that's about it. I have no negatives uh, about this watch. Um, to say visually, it's a beautiful watch and, and, and you can see the photos that I took coming into this video and that was under no special light. You know, that was basically using my, my cell phone. Uh, obviously if you were to really, uh, use a professional camera under professional lighting as they did on their website, you would uh, get even prettier, but I wanted people to see what it looked like, you know, simple, quick shots, how nice, what a pretty watch this is, and how well built it is. Again, it, it's a watch that when you hold in your hand, uh, it just says quality, and uh, it's, it, they are designed uh, corporately headquartered in Britain and made in Switzerland, and they're very open sourced about who makes their watches, which I also appreciate, and clearly uh, the company producing their watches knows what they're doing because they, like I say, they're, uh, the fit and the finish and the quality control is really outstanding. So I think that's all I have to say. Uh, I'm going to keep this as, as a, quick, a quickie uh, just to alert people that if you are uh, looking uh, at, at Ferrer and you don't want something as, maybe as chunky as, as, um, as I have the, the other GMT I own, which is more of a sort of tool travel GMT, this guy is obviously really more of a uh, well, it's verging on dress. I mean, it's definitely a more formal watch. It's more formal than the, than the other one, the other uh, Lander. Um, it's, for me, at least, it's more formal. I'm, I'm a tool watch, uh, you know, dive watch kind of guy. This is, this is as close as I get to a, drive, uh, to a dress watch. So you, if you're like me, I think this might be the right balance for you. So I think that's all quickie. I just wanted to throw that out for you guys that are uh, interested in watches and, and my uh, journey through micro brands. This is my second Ferrer, and again... Um, I think they hit this one out of the park, and I'll see you on the Brink Zone. And uh, if you have any comments or questions or uh, anything I missed, 
Uh, let me know below, sub up, and I'll see you guys on the Brink Zone.